Hey hey and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we extended our input system a little bit to be able to answer whether we're just pressing a button once instead of answering whether the button is pressed right now, which would have answered true for every update. Now we can just ask it once so that we can toggle stuff on and off like this. Um, it just makes it easier for us. And we also, just for fun, made this little speed up and slow down your game thing. Just a little disclaimer, don't slow it down all the way to zero since we are multiplying. We can't get out of it because anything multiplied with zero is zero. So if you want to fix that, either increment it by some fixed value instead of multiplying it, or you can always clamp it. But that's not for today's video. So what we're going to focus on for a couple of videos now is to be able to target something. Because right now, they get healthy by just bumping into them. That's not what we want. We want to be able to target them, and we want to be able to do some action which will make them healthy. And actually, we're probably going to blow giant bubbles around them and let them soar away. Uh, I was in at the park the other day, and a friend of mine actually brought his giant bubble kit. I don't know if you've ever seen that. And people were so happy. They thought it was awesome. And a few even asked if he could blow bubbles around them and let them soar away to wherever they were going. And so I thought, that would be cool. That's probably what we're going to do. We're going to blow bubbles around the sick people and they're going to soar away to safety. So. Okay, anyway, <laughs> in order to make that happen, we need to be able to target people that are near to us. But before we do the actual targeting, we need a way to visualize who is our target, right? So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm not sure if we're going to make it all the way. We're going to start with that, right? So what I'm thinking is we're just going to have some sort of color, colored ring or circle underneath so that you can tell who is targeted. And we could do that in many ways. The thing that I've been thinking of is we're going to make a simple parenting system. So this um, circle is going to be a type of game object, which is going to be very simple. It's not going to be able to do anything. It's basically just going to be a sprite. But then we're going to make this parenting system, and it's going to be good. Let's just go. Let's start. Let's get to it. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually go into the entity package and just create this class. And I'm going to call mine a selection circle. Maybe. <laughs> All right. And this, of course, extends game object. All right. Let's implement the methods. And this game object isn't going to actually do anything. So I don't think we need the update. The sprite, we're going to have to make the sprite ourselves because we don't have anything. We don't need, really need a collision box because this isn't going to collide with anything. However, uh, if we return null, the uh, checks are probably going to crash. So we're going to have to provide something. And I'm actually thinking of removing this from being abstract. Sorry. I'm thinking of implementing this in the game object class, rather, because I think it's going to look the same for most of our game objects. So let's just start by doing that. It's going to be very quick. So return get collision box collides with other get collision collision box. There we go. And this can't be abstract anymore. So awesome. Just to clean up, let's actually remove the implementation from this class. Uh, let's see, where is that? See, it's exactly the same. All right. Just close those off. That's not what we were going for. But so now we only have these. So this has to has to um, have something. So let's actually just give it the position and the size. All right, and we need to make the sprite. And what I think we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to keep a color. And 
these sprites. So let's just make a constructor, but let's not take anything in for now at least. And uh, let's make the color, let's make it orange for now. Or you can make yours whatever you want. And then let's say initialize sprites. And what we're gonna do in here is you've done this many times before, let's say sprites is, and we're gonna cast it to a buffered image, image utils, whoops, sorry, that's a static, of course, image utils static method, create compatible image of the size that we have, and let's say bit masked. All right, so we're gonna need a size and this size isn't gonna be 64 by 64. So let's set it up here. Let's set this size to be, I'm gonna set mine to be 32 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall. And let's import that. All right, so moving on. Graphics 2D graphics equal to sprite create graphics. Graphics, set color, color. Graphics, fill oval. And since we are just doing our sprite now, we're not creating, or sorry, we're not pasting it on our window, or sorry, our display. Uh, we of course start at the top left corner. So zero, zero, and then for the entire width and the entire height. All right, and then let's dispose to free that memory up. I think this is enough for now. Let's move on to, actually, let's see what that looks like. Let's just see if we got something uh, by going into the game state and let's make one. Selection, circle, circle. New selection, circle. All right, so let's say, do we need to give it anything? Maybe not, let's just add it to game objects. Add circle. There we go. Let's just try that out and see if we got a circle. And I can't see that we did. Why might that be? We never returned the sprites. That would be helpful. There we go. Oh, there we go. We have our circle. It is currently very static. Let's change that. Let's make our simple parenting system. Um, I think we're gonna do it inside of this game object class. Let's just give it a protected game object parent. All right. And I'm thinking here in the position when we get it, what we want to do is, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so position, let's just call it final position. Maybe we could have called it position with something applied, with parent applied, no? Let's just call it final position. The parent position might not be applied. There might not be a parent. I'm babbling, let's move on. Uh, not what I wanted to do. Position, copy of our position. So now we're not making any changes to our position, so we're not adding uh, the parent position, which we will be adding to this one, so that's why we needed a copy. All right, if we have a parent, parent isn't null, then we want to do final position, add parent get position. So we don't have this add method. Let's generate this or create this add method. And this will of course just be x plus equals position get x and y plus equals position get y. All right, I think that's it. And then we need to return the final position. Is that enough for our first little try maybe? Oh, we need a setter of course. We need to be able to set the parent. So let's just 
generate the setter for the parent. And now we can say that circle set parent player. Now it should be following us wherever we go. And it does. As you can see, it has an offset though. And we're actually just going to be refactoring the rendering position logic a little bit. I'm just going to show you right now. We have it all inside of the renderer. So here we say that render the game object at this position minus the camera position minus whatever size it is um, divided by half or divided by two. Um, and that's probably not going to cut it for all of our objects. This worked fine for our um, moving entities, but now we're going to be creating other objects and we don't want this to be determined here. We want our objects to be able to determine their own render offset. However, this video is already 11 minutes, so I'm going to do that in a second video. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Hey, do up.